for being such an awesome crowd. Um, I'm going to bring up uh, your headlining comic. He uh, is just on the road every weekend. He's been on Comedy Central. He does clubs and colleges all over America. Really lucky time. Really looking forward to his set. Here he comes, Mr. Mark Yaffe. Now, we, we were in a Prius passing people doing 90 today. How did you do that? How do I do it? It was awesome. I'd never seen anything like it. But great to be back in Burley two times in one year. Well, my career is really going places, isn't it? Tonight, Burley. Uh, tomorrow night, Idaho Falls. Next week, I will be appearing on a milk carton. <laughs> on my comedy witness protection tour. Hold on, make sure I'm in focus for the HBO special. He's filming me right here. Yes. Gotcha. You're part of history. Right? <laughs> and it's good to be on. I love it. I took, you know, it's Jim's first time in Burley, so I, I said, hey, we got to take the tour of Burley. And so I took him around. That was like the longest 12 minutes of his life. <laughs> he did it twice. Rupert. Yeah, there's a, oh, nothing like Rupert. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> you got at least three times as many grain silos in uh, feed stores here. <laughs> to Kiss Army. Now come in this Friday night in the fairgrounds parking lot, it's Kiss My Ass. <laughs> you get the circus in Burley? You get the little pop-up tent circus? Right? I love that. It's not like Ringling Brothers, though. A small town is like Ringworm Cousins. <laughs> Three clowns, two mimes, one minivan. Who needs lions and tigers? We got Larry the Dancing Goat and Bing Bing the Paraplegic Panda. They got the uh, gang problem under control here, okay? okay? They get the gangs control here, FFA 4-H? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you eyeball my steer? <laughs> you eyeball my steer? I will choke your chicken. <laughs> but they do, the, the small town departments, God bless them, they're doing a job, but they get a little work. And, and now the big trend is to all the, all the uh, leftover like, armaments and, and tanks and stuff from the Iraqi wars and all that. They're given to like, all the small town departments and the, the SWAT teams want to go out and use them once in a while. We had in my hometown before I moved uh, a couple years ago, we had a 75 year old disabled drunk man in his trailer with a BB gun, 911 sent out a SWAT team. It was a four hour standoff. <laughs> Really, SWAT team versus BB gun. What kind of negotiating power do you have with a BB gun? Are you cops getting closer? I swear, I'll, I'll put my eye out. Well, in, in the cops' defense, maybe they're worried about more dangerous weapons. Pea shooter, slingshot, super soaker. See, if I'd been in charge, it would have been over in five minutes. Would have backed up a tow truck and hauled this house to jail. So anyone here tonight, uh, like Jim and I, anyone else from out of town who made the big drive in from uh, Jerome? Anyone, anyone out of town? We're all, we're all from here, we all came in the same car? <laughs> A really big truck. So is it, is it, is it harvesting season right now? We, we caught you at a good time? Is it? Because you got Ag Town, right? What's, what's the crop here? Potatoes. Thank you. Well, Idaho, Mark, yeah. Potatoes, do your research, yeah. But I don't, I, now, Idaho is a nice state, as long as you're not a wolf. <laughs> All I'm saying is choose your children's Halloween costumes wisely. <laughs> Look at this, I got a wolf and a bag of Snickers. <laughs> your, your politicians scare me a little bit. You got Governor Butch Otter, uh, <laughs> Representative uh, Raul Labrador, Senator Mike Crapo. It sounds like a bad B porn movie here. <laughs> Who is your lieutenant governor? Betty Beaver? I don't know what they are. It's a trip. Actually, before becoming a comic, a little bit about myself, before becoming a comic, I actually uh, did serve during the first Gulf War. Please don't clap. I was a waiter at Chili's. <laughs> but I did see live combat. I taught public school in L.A. for three and a half years. <laughs> Holy shit, the gangs, the guns, the violence, I will never teach fourth grade again. 
I, I was so traumatized by teaching the school, we actually homeschooled our daughters before. We had any homeschool parents here tonight? Where Ronald was? Homeschool parents. You guys got to try out the homeschool. That shit is awesome. One of my kids was student of the month every time. <laughs> I will never forget their first geography quiz. They were fighting in the back of the car. I kicked them out, told them to find their own way home. <laughs> yeah, they're good now. I got, I got two daughters. We got, we got parents here tonight. Clap your hands, parents. Yeah. Awesome. Any excuse to ditch the kids on a Wednesday night? I love it. Man. That's, you got to have a break, man. That's just, we get, I get too many breaks. I'm always on the road. We were just up in Canada. Canada is the... You thought I know it was a white state. Canada is the whitest country on the planet. I'm not just talking weather. Canada was so white, we didn't even see a black bear. Canada is so white, you can't get Newport menthols. And you two smokers get, that's pretty funny. I like this guy. But Canada is actually getting Americanized. You notice that? Check out their politicians. They got that uh, the mayor of Toronto, uh, Mayor Rob, Rob Ford, Mayor Chris Farley, <laughs> busted for smoking crack, and he's in rehab, running for re-election. <laughs> that is awesome. And he, I believe him though when he says he only smoked crack one time, because I saw a picture of that guy. That is not the body of a crack smoker. <laughs> that is the body of a buffet eater. <laughs> He is running three election against an adult film star. This porn actress is running against him. I'm like, oh great, now the voters have a choice between one big boob and two. <laughs> this is how weird Canada is. It, this is a, like I said, it's the whitest state in the, in, the, in the planet just about, and they have a KKK, a Ku Klux Klan, in Canada. It's like, why? That's like one K for a black person in Canada. <laughs> And you know if they have a KKK in Canada, they got at least one French Canadian in the KKK. Or as he would call it, the Klu Klux Klan. <laughs> you know those guys are trying to adopt a highway for litter removal in Georgia? The Klan is? That's amazing. That would be one scary road to get caught drinking and driving. Cop pulled your car. Oh, geez, I don't know what happened back there. I was just driving along. I uh, hit a big white cone. <laughs> Hold on, we'll give the folks up hopefully a couple extra seconds to get out of <laughs> Well, think about it. The KKK is the only organization dumb enough to have a uniform with a dunce cap. <laughs> I got verbally assaulted by a white supremacist. You guys got any white, su white supremacists? Raise your hands. Any white supremacists here? <laughs> Because a white supremacist got right in my face. Hey, you, you, all, you minorities, you all need to go back to your own country. <laughs> Sir, I'm Native American. I'm in my own country. <laughs> I started messing with her. What tribe are you from? I said, I'm a California Sioux. I said, so far I've said Walmart. I've said McDonald's. <laughs> so in my agent. Holy shit. He just booked me down in Bartlesville, Oklahoma during rodeo week. Me and 3,000 drunk cowboys. You do the math. <laughs> said, I felt like Michael Vick working at Pitco. <laughs> It's all right. It's all right. We can laugh at Michael Vick jokes. He served his time. 14 dog years. <laughs> <laughs> I, looks like I don't see too many of my people are not. Any, any uh, natives, anyone else ready to party like it's 1491? <laughs> I'll, I'll take a Puerto Rican with a dream catcher. We get one of those. <laughs> no? How about an Italian with a bad back? <laughs> Like a lot of Native Americans, I am not uh, full blood, I am uh, mixed blood, alcohol content. <laughs> That's nice scotch and soda tonight on gin and tonic, right? No, I'm a, I'm a Mexican Irish Navajo, no drinking problem here. <laughs> Doctor slapped me at birth, I blew a .15. <laughs> Seriously, he's like, congratulations ma'am, you had a DUI. <laughs> I come from a long line of hardcore drinkers. We're called Catholics. That's right, 12 years of Catholic school. I even went to a Catholic college, which wasn't that different than a public college, except the Catholics put holy water in their bones. <laughs> Two Catholic stoners. Peace be with you. We got a new pope last year. You get a new pope. Every time they elect a new pope, they, uh, they signal the vote by, they shoot the smoke out the chimney there at the Vatican. 
And when they elected Pope Francis, that smoke just kept coming out, and coming out, and coming out. I'm like, holy shit, they elected a Jamaican. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's weird though. Like I said, Mexican, Irish, Navajo, Mexico. Any other? Any Aztec Navajos here tonight? Any assholes? You get me hoes. Where are the hoes? <laughs> I did that line in San Francisco, eight Asian folks jumped up. Oh, fuck me! <laughs> eight ho here for the show. <laughs> and I need to clarify something real quick. Before I go any farther, let me just clarify real quick. Uh, rednecks, it's wash, not wash. Latinos, it's library, not library. Asian people, it's signal, look, then change lanes. <laughs> Do you have one in town? <laughs> I know you got a Chinese restaurant, there's at least four Asian people in there, right? <laughs> Yeah, so all of a sudden, I joke about drinking, that's like, man, man, my mom, man, when I was born, I, I was a big baby. Check this out, I weighed 11 pounds, 5 ounces. Holy shit, wasn't even a C-section, I was a double D-section. <laughs> but the most embarrassing part, I had an 11 pound head on a 5 ounce body. <laughs> I was a globe on a Q-tip. <laughs> Show all my baby pictures of me. <laughs> but my mom had an easy delivery because I'm adopted. <laughs> <laughs> Your friends okay? They just they they're gone. Huh? <laughs> Do you know those guys? Or are they just sitting empty? Oh, they're church family friends. Okay, good. Well, maybe they went to Bible study and left her behind. Sorry. <laughs> so we saw that comedy show. We better start praying. Right? Awesome. Okay, good to be here, man. It's, uh, it's a trip, though, man. You, it's, I, I wasn't raised a, a, a native. I, I didn't find out I was Navajo until I was 25 years old. All those years growing up playing cowboys and Indians, I was suiting up for the wrong team. <laughs> yeah. Navajo adopted by a Mexican mother, Jewish father. I'm a bargain hunter gatherer. <laughs> and technically I'm an illegal because you cannot adopt an Indian child from their tribe, that's illegal now Indian Child Welfare Act, they passed that law to protect our people from Angelina Jolie <laughs> I got on Ancestry.com you check that shit, Ancestry.com is awesome man, I found out on my Navajo side I found out my grandfather is a medicine man like this is awesome Grandpa's a medicine man, who well, turns out he's a pharmacist at CVS. <laughs> I had a very interesting experience. I got to meet the great, great, great grandson of the Warrior Chief Sitting Bull uh, last year. Yeah, I was in South Dakota. I met the, yeah, he's the hyperactive great, great, great grandson of Sitting Bull. His name is uh, Red Bull. <laughs> of course, people think if you're a native or you're a partner, they think we're all getting rich on casinos. I own my casino money. I suck. <laughs> Serious, huh? I, I know it's good for me because I you don't have live blackjack here. That's safe. I can go to a video machine. I don't want to walk away. But the blackjack games kill me, right? We, we were working uh, uh, in Oregon. We were, we were at a tribal casino last week, and they had a little Vietnamese blackjack dealer. Her name was uh, Sun Yu Luz. <laughs> Took all our money and did our nails. That was some bullshit right there. Bro. <laughs> Talking about no happy ending for you, sir. <laughs> You guys get up to Fort Hall? You guys are down the jackpot? Or did I call it Mormon Vegas? <laughs> yeah, when you're in the jackpot, LDS stands for let's drink and smoke. <laughs> what happens at jackpot stays out of church. That's all right. <laughs> jackpot. You, you've been to jackpot, you didn't hit shit. There's no jackpot in jackpot. That is like Reno got pumped. But even if you're a jackpot or Fort Hall, you notice they have celebrity slot machines now, you see? They actually have a, a Clint Eastwood slot machine, they actually have a Michael Jackson slot machine, an Elvis Presley slot machine. I'm like, how about a Dr. Phil slot machine? Come on, every time you lose, you'd be like, what were you thinking? <laughs> even if you win, like, you still got a problem. <laughs> Listen, mister, you can make an elephant shit in a banana, but you cannot make a monkey eat peanut butter. Do you understand what I'm saying?
So how come they can't, how come no live blackjack here is this? It's strict, huh? No way far enough to go. What's that? No way to count to 21? What's going on? <laughs> Well, do, do you guys win? You ever, clap your hands if you ever win at the, at the casino. Yeah. One guy, yeah, he's buying, awesome, two, all right. You split the tab. Yeah, what, what do you play? Well, slot machines, obviously, that's all you, or no, you go, you go to Mormon Vegas? Yeah, I go to Mormon Vegas. What do you play down there? Texas Hole. Texas Hole, it's not like he's from Texas, Texas Hole. It's my game, I'm from Amarillo. I love Texas, dude, that's a big state. You got three time zones in Texas, drinking, drunk, and unconscious. <laughs> Is that a southern accent or just a southern Idaho accent? Where are you from? Utah. Utah. <laughs> I'm from Utah, though. <laughs> what about it? <laughs> that is awesome. That's, a, that's the best uh, Utah accent ever. How long you lived here in the metropolis of Berlin? <laughs> or did you just drive in from the show from Salt Lake? Three, oh, you're almost local. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> How many people are um, from here originally? Where am I? Lifer, B BFL, where are you at? Wow, that's half the room. Who came to the front of this? Who were out of state? Name a, name a state where you came from. Anyone? <laughs> South Dakota, all right. All right. I think she won so far. Anyone beat South Dakota? <laughs> Hawaii? No, no one moved here from Hawaii. Okay, I didn't think so. Do you have any of the other Indians here? No, Turban Indians, not Urban Indians. <laughs> Microchip, not Buffalo Chip. <laughs> Tech support, not child support. <laughs> You know they outsourced our tech support to, from India, U.S. to India? India outsourced tech support from India to the Philippines. You know sometimes you call for tech support on your phone or your VCR or a DVD player with a VCR, like it's 1997. <laughs> you know if you have your camcorder and your... <laughs> if your phonograph happens to break down, but if you call now for tech support, the Philippines pick up the phone. And that gets very tortured. Is it just me? I, I feel so racist when I call the Philippines because I'm like, oh my god, it's the Filipinos. And like, thank you for calling tech support. Uh, before we get started, I will need your first and last name. I'm like, here we go, a Mark Yaffe. Well, thank you for calling, Mr. Mark Yaffe. Right? And then it goes on and on. You imagine they outsourced 411. No one really calls 411. Direct assistance has been outsourced to the Philippines. I just hope they don't outsource 911 to the Philippines. <laughs> you will not survive that conversation. 911, what is your emergency? I've been shot. I'm bleeding. I need an ambulance. I need to get to a hospital right away. Uh, we can have 911. I'm so sorry to hear you have been shot. That you're bleeding. That you need an ambulance. And you wish to get to the hospital right away. However, in order to provide more excellent service, I will need to start with your first and last name. <laughs> Yeah, Mark Yappi. Okay, Mr. Mark Yappi. Can you please do tell me the location where you were shot? Yeah, I got shot in the lower abdomen. Uh, lower abdomen, is that located anywhere near Twin Falls or Rexford? <laughs> so let me ask this, when you go to Jackpot, do you get free drinks when you gamble? That's, you know, that's Nevada. It's crazy. Free drinks when you gamble in Nevada. It's like free blindfolds at a rifle range. <laughs> Serious, I had so many free drinks the last time I was in Vegas, I lost $300 on an ice machine. <laughs> I went to the roulette table, I tried to buy a foul. <laughs> what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Bullshit. What happens in Vegas stays on my credit report. <laughs> Nevada is just a greedy state. They have legalized gambling and legalized prostitution in about half of their counties. Legalized. Now I saw when they said they legalized something, the prices are supposed to drop. I've lived in Nevada for almost three years. I haven't sent any hooker discount centers. <laughs> There's no booty barns. No blow and goes. No 69 cent hostos. Yeah, I moved to Reno, Nevada voluntarily, which proves one thing, you're never too old to keep making bad decisions. <laughs> Reno is like Vegas got punked, I'm serious. And for this 4th of July, Reno had budget cuts. Instead of a fireworks show, they just blew up a couple of meth labs. <laughs> I lived in the barrio in, in Reno. I live in an exclusive community of, outside of uh, Reno. It's called Sparks. <laughs> my neighbor's called Esparra. 
You live in you live in the hood. It's a little bit different, man. And our, our Goodwill thrift store had a security guard. <laughs> the kids in my apartment pool instead of playing Marco Polo, they played Marco Cholo. We didn't even our phone didn't even have three G. We had OG. Hey, can you hear me now? I'm leaving Reno. I'm moving back to my uh, where was, I'm moving back to my original hometown. I'm moving back to northern Mexico, as the rest of the country calls it, Los Angeles. Yeah, I grew up in an area in LA known as Pacoima in Spanish for uh, just parking the lawn. It's a trip down there, man. California is just, whew, that's scary. I made a big mistake the last time I was in San Francisco. I was checking into my hotel room. I asked the desk clerk for a non-smoking queen. <laughs> Ten minutes later, come feel the tobacco chewing car stressor at my door. It's been a fun year, man. It's fun year. We started out in uh, uh, Minnesota, Duluth, Minnesota. I was back there two years in a row. New Year's Eve in Duluth, Minnesota. This year, minus 34, minus 34 degrees, with the wind chill, minus two testicles. <laughs> Wow, I heard of blue balls. That place is ridiculous. I had the worst case of male Minnesota camel toe ever. <laughs> my package went into hibernation behind my spleen. It didn't come out till Memorial Day. How cold does it get here in Burley? Not that cold, I know that. What's, what's your low temperature? Maybe 10, 8, 5? Minus 12, yeah. But that's not like a day, that's like a special occurrence. That's like that, that's like average, right? I could never live anywhere on a regular basis where it's warmer inside my freezer than it is outside of my house, that's all I'm saying. I was in Tucson, Arizona two weeks ago. Oh my, 100, holy shit. What's their state bird in Arizona? Roast turkey? Man, my rental car came with oven gloves. We were at the Tucson Mall. We saw ladies' breast implants evaporate. So we were down there, we were doing a, a show at Sun City, the retirement community, which, which the, the, the average temperature and the average age of the residents were both like a, over 110. I mean, these people were like retired from being retired. They loved the show though, they all started clapping and all the lights went off. Started clapping, all the lights came back on. Thank you, six people seen a clapper commercial. The rest of you staring at me like Larry Craig at the airport right now. So. So I mean to bring PTSD for you guys. <laughs> you know how you find a bathroom at an airport, so you get on Larry Craigslist. <laughs> That's all I got. I'm done. Really, no more Larry Craigslist. <laughs> Arizona's crazy, man. It's just like it, I, I, it, it's just too hot down there. They always say the same thing. Well, they say it's a dry heat, right? So it's a volcano, oh, microwave on the surface of the sun. And to be honest, I don't think they even have Mexicans in Arizona. I'm serious. I think they're just well done white people. <laughs> when I was down there, I asked the rental car place for one of these, uh, I asked them for an economy car. Right? Oh, I'm going to economize. They give you one of these smart cars. But round of applause, did you even have, is there, are they even allowed in, in, in your city limits? You probably just laugh them right out of town. Smart car? This thing is a sperm with wheels, is what it is. <laughs> I got in the car, accidentally it hit the horn, it's like dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Smart car. I don't go from zero to sixty on the back of a flatbed. <laughs> you don't want to get an accident in a smart car instead of an airbag and a condom pops out. <laughs> the nice thing though, when you're done with the smart car, you don't even have to take it back to the rental car center. Seriously. You just step on it and take it to aluminum recycling for redemption value. <laughs> I got no business in a smart car. I got no business in a smartphone either. I, I, I'm serious, man. I get so messed up on my. I have called Verizon so much for tech support. I've been downgraded to the GED plan. <laughs> I am now rocking the Motorola Moron. <laughs> voice navigation, voice dialing, voice texting. That's not all 100% accurate. When I was in Arizona, I put on my phone Phoenix, Arizona. 18 hours later, I was in Enid, Oklahoma. <laughs> Anyone voice text here by round of applause? My voice text is that. 
Do you have text? You know, we have text messaging. That's, that's not a note you leave in a history book, Bernie. Let's get to the 2000s right now. Now, voice texting is not 100% accurate. When I had my first smartphone a couple years back, I put on my phone, Honey, I don't need you to pick up milk. Yeah, what came out on the other end was, Honey, I don't need you, I picked up a milf. <laughs> so, stereotypes, we've got to talk about those. And I said, oh, everyone thinks natives are getting rich on casinos. Not true. And I suck at that. And, and all Indian casinos are not created equal. I mean, Fort Hall, they put in that nice multi-million dollar, nice hotel and shit. We, we, we did, uh, last month, we were out in, in the Midwest, we played an Indian casino. Anyone been to the Broken Dreams Casino, Hot Shop, and Fireworks Stand? Anyone? <laughs> wow. First of all, the hotel they had us in was a Super 8 that had been downgraded to a Sucky 6. <laughs> the sign outside the door didn't even say no vacancy, it just said no. <laughs> this place is so old, the Bible in my room didn't even have a New Testament. <laughs> I had a police chalk outline on my carpet. <laughs> Safety chain is on the outside of the door. <laughs> They're like, well, leave the light on. I'm like, I'm sure as shit, I'm not turning it off. <laughs> and I try to be healthy on the road, too, so I asked the desk clerk, excuse me, sir, do you guys like have a, a gym here at the, at the hotel? Yeah. He's a night manager. He gets in about 9.30. <laughs> not the workout I had in mind. <laughs> So we went over to the actual casino, if you can call it that. Yeah, right? It was a, first time we walked in there, they, they, at 6 o'clock they took the uh, buffet table, flipped it back into the blackjack table. <laughs> yeah, their, their special, their buffet special was uh, surf and turf, seaweed and crabgrass. <laughs> the roulette wheel was an old hubcap with numbers painted on it. <laughs> I saw a guy hit three sevens on a slot machine, a possum dropped out. <laughs> I don't think that's supposed to happen. That's fun. We gotta go. We, I'm going to, back to Wisconsin. I was out there in Wisconsin uh, two years ago. Um, I, probably, I was in Black River Falls, Wisconsin, performing for the Ho Chunk Tribe. Um, I'm actually now an honorary member of the of the Ho Chunk Tribe because I lost a whole chunk of money. <laughs> Kick my ass. And when I was coming out of the hotel, the Mayflower Moving Band showed up to the Indian Casino. I'm thinking, yeah, this. You're getting very sleepy, very sleepy. <laughs> After the show, you'll get back all of the land. <laughs> and you will stop casting Lou Diamond Phillips as an Indian in your car. <laughs> they would never let me work in an Indian casino other than tell jokes. I could not be responsible for myself, right? Like the giveaways, I always have those big giveaways. I'd be like messing with people. I'd be like, congratulations, Bob Kincaid. Here's the keys to your new 2014 Lexus convertible. Unfortunately, Bob, you won during our Indian Giver Days promotion. <laughs> <laughs> you don't write my movie too much. <laughs> okay, carpal tunnel yet. <laughs> That's awesome. That camera must have a big memory. That thing's like a little James Bond camera. Hey, gigabytes. I cut off like 20 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> he's not even filming, he's just pretending. <laughs> yeah, we'll be, we'll be selling bootlegs for 99 cents tomorrow on Amazon. Because I am huge in case account, is that what we say? Cash up? What, are we, we're eating cereal for our county now? Is it, we'll have some cash and Benedoka on top of it. <laughs> oh man, gee, so uh, uh, do you guys have Radio Shack here in town? No, you gotta drive all the way to uh, Albion for that. Or <laughs> Very sad news. Uh, they just announced they're closing 1,100 radio shacks. 1,100 radio shacks, and they say as many as 35 customers. It's a trip. People find out you're native, even part native. They start asking all sorts of weird questions. I got this one after show. They, oh, you're Native American. I bet your children have beautiful tribal names. I'm like, yeah, a little big mouth and grounded till Christmas. <laughs> Can you share some ancient tribal wisdom? I'm not even from the reservation. Like, yeah, ancient tribal wisdom. I'm, uh, I've been to the desert on a horse with no name. <laughs> it felt good to get out of the rain. <laughs> Man, so we, get, we get comments. No other ethnic group get. We get this, oh, you're, I'm part Indian too. You can tell by my high cheekbones. 
You would do that to any other racial group? No way. You would, would not walk up to an Irish guy. I'm part Irish too. You can tell about my high blood, alcohol content. <laughs> I am part African American. You can tell about my large white girlfriend. <laughs> You know what they say, the big stereotype natives have to deal with, they say Native Americans cannot handle our liquor. I hate that stereotype, that's bullshit. Midgets cannot handle the liquor. <laughs> I don't want to be insensitive, but they busted the father from the little people, big, big world TV show for DUI. He was driving under the influence. <laughs> All right, I know I cut the audience in half on that one, I'm sorry. Came up a little short on this side, that's all right. I'll stretch it for you guys, that's good. I know, that's politically incorrect. You cannot call a little person a midget, by the way, okay? They are micro-Americans. They say call a little person a midget, so I call a black person the N-word. I'm like, really? I'm like, midget, please. Midget, you crazy. Midget, be tripping. <laughs> Do you have that one micro-American officer on the force here? Every department seems to have one. I don't care if it's county, state, tribal, federal. That's just two boots and a head sticking out. Pissed off. I got stopped by that guy at the beginning of summer when I was down in New Mexico. And I deserved to be stopped. I was speeding. So he hit the light side. I pull over. I stop my car. He got out of his vehicle. He walked toward my car. He disappeared. I'm sitting there for 10 minutes. The light's going behind me. The red and blue lights. I can't do anything. I'm like checking the mirrors. I'm looking out the windows. I'm, what the hell? Finally, I just rolled out my window. I'm like, come out, come out, wherever you are. He did not think that was funny at all. He's, he slapped those cuffs on me. My ankles hurt for three weeks. Midget, please. Midget, you crazy. You guys drinking tonight? Where are the drinkers at? Make some noise, drinkers. Come on, drink up. They can't catch all of you. Two burly cops and an animal control officer on overtime. And if she catches you, you deserve that DUI. Now, don't drink and drive, you guys, because the police have that breathalyzer, the breath test. You know only one group of people are, seem to be afraid of that breath test? Pot smokers? Because the breath test does not tell the cops that you've been getting high. Unless you're so high, you're taking a hit off their breathalyzer. <laughs> uh, Holmes. I mean, Officer Holmes. <laughs> Sorry, your pipe's clogged. Just for the record, I do not smoke weed. I do not want to be known as a token Indian. <laughs> Medical marijuana they got now. Well, they got recreational in Washington and Colorado. It was so funny. We were working in uh, Buffalo, Wyoming. We're in Wyoming. And for some reason, I was checking the road condition or something. On the Wyoming Highway Patrol, it's put, do not attempt to transport weed from Colorado in this state. It is a felony. Boom. <laughs> right? They're not shitting around. Right below that. Two men arrested while transporting marijuana from Colorado to Indiana. How high were these guys? <laughs> oh, dude, I don't know. We're going to go to the Rockies. <laughs> Medical marijuana for the terminally ill. What's next? Medical methamphetamines for the terminally slow? <laughs> I'm like, let's get them some crank over at the DMV. Right, come on. <laughs> I don't know about your Idaho DMV where I live. I've seen more movement in a wax museum. You give me an eight ball and eight tweakers, I will clean up all your DMV lines, Idaho. That'd be pretty scary going to DMV tweakers working behind the counter. And you'd get your, uh, first of all, they'd be open like 24 hours a day. You would get your suspended license back for like $4. Lock your car up though, because tweakers will steal your shit, turn around and try to sell it back to you. Hey man, here, check it out, dude. It's an all-purpose camping tool. It's a back scratcher, pocket fisherman, marshmallow cooker. I'm like, give me back my damn antenna. <laughs> Sad. I know I shouldn't make fun of meth addicts, but some of the shit they pull is ridiculous. They take any two cars from the 1900s that don't run, 
turn them into one car that runs like shit. <laughs> I had these neighbors in Northern California. They took a Pinto and a Miata, bundled it into a piñata. <laughs> it ran and one of them dropped a match. Now it's a blazer. <laughs> they, they never did make it back. Should we send out a search party? <laughs> one drunk guy want to check church or the liquor store? Anyone? <laughs> Do you want to text them? Make sure they're okay. You're not worried about it. I don't believe in those people. You don't what? I don't believe in those stinking phones. You don't believe in what? In a stinking phone. In a stinking phone. Oh, you don't do it. You don't do a cell phone? Okay. Oh, Clap for her right now. That's awesome. <laughs> no Facebook. Do you do computer? Oh, just barely. Really? Barely. It's just enough to pay pay the water. But get, oh, leave me alone. Yeah, you go to the library. She did dial up. She's like. Doo. Good for you. So what do you what do you do if you have to like there's, you can't find a payphone within like 300 mile radius, right? <laughs> Holy shit, we gotta go to cop. Do you know what a payphone is in the North American continent? <laughs> I was at we were working in Minnesota. It was this crazy. This is a true story. We're at this bar in uh, Shakopee, Minnesota, and all these like 22, 23 year old kids. They were like, we're coming coming out of the bathroom. There's a payphone on the wall. They're like crowded around like they discovered a dinosaur bone. <laughs> oh, dude, look at this shit. You can change it, see if it works. <laughs> I felt old then, that's for sure. <laughs> you know. Yeah, they say 40 is the new 80. <laughs> it's weird. But middle age sucks. I have like the sex drive of a 20 year old, the bank account of a 30 year old, the bladder of a 90 year old. <laughs> he knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> What's up, Seattle? Say, no, brother. <laughs> He's got that look on his face. He looks happy. He looks like he just got laid. Good for you. <laughs> I don't want to put anyone on the spot. They're both smiling. That's all I can say. <laughs> and what about you? Well, you just got back from Hawaii or what? You look like you just got out of the spray booth. You look all the time. <laughs> we'll give him a tractor to pick his potatoes. You got to do it by hand. The fuck this. Can... <laughs> Are you Italian or Latino? What, what's your... Not he's, sure. He's not sure. <laughs> He's like me. I never, I, dude, I never met my father either. Run some responsibility. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. You spend a lot of time that you work outside? <laughs> Alright, I'm asking way too many questions. Is that the mayor? Am I in trouble? My car's getting towed right now. Jim, get the Prius out of there. <laughs> Trade it in for a smart car. Alright, none of my damn business. We'll just work our, we're going to get all of you, don't worry. We're going to get table to table. No, we didn't sign up for this, sir. I don't know, you could have that cop vibe too. You could he be a cop? No. They're like, no. Was like, no. well, him a cop? <laughs> he doesn't drink nearly enough. Awesome. So, what do you do when you're not bootlegging uh, CD, DVD, sir? I'm a truck driver. Truck driver? Yeah. He's going to be watching this in his cab. <laughs> I'll be on Prius under his wheels. That's awesome. Long haul? Local. Local? Yeah. Who do you drive for? None of my damn business. None of your damn business. You potatoes? Beets. Beets? Oh, sugar beets. <laughs> we have to differentiate, right? Isn't it like the beet farmers and the sugar beet farmers? Like East Coast, West Coast? She <laughs> only grows his beets. I'm doing sugar beets. That's all 1900s. How's it? How's the beets? You doing good? Yeah. Just so what do they use that for, like, flavoring and the... Cereal? Yeah. <laughs> it's red? I'm just deducting. I don't know. Is it sugar beet red? It's no. It's white. white? Well, like most of white of Idaho. That makes sense. Okay. <laughs> white potatoes and white beets. I just brought my own stroll to a screeching halt. This is awesome. <laughs> Start the car, Jim. They're looking pissed. <laughs> but I do have to admit, though, like a lot of Native Americans, I did lose my land and home to the white man. I did. In my case, it was my ex-wife's divorce attorney. <laughs> that was the second worst treaty ever. <laughs> 22 years, that sucked. I was just three years away from my fifth blowjob. <laughs> Most of you laughing, one guy out there has his cell phone out. He's counting. <laughs> She's a good lady, but we...